हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू मेरीन इंजीनियरिंग ट्यूटोरियल्स आई एम अतुल कुमार गुप्ता एंड बैक विद ए न्यू ट्यूटोरियल प्रेजेंटली वी आर स्टडिंग मेरीन बॉयलर्स टुडे वी हैव ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट लेक्चर एंड द टॉपिक इज फंक्शन ऑफ रिफ्रैक्टरी दे आर डिजायरेबल प्रॉपर्टीज फॉर्म्स ऑफ रिफ्रैक्टरी मटेरियल ऑफ इट्स इंस्टॉलेशन एंड टाइप्स ऑफ refractory failures the lecture also discusses the types of water wall used in water tube boilers refractory and its functions refractory is defined as an insulating material which can withstand the furnace temperature usually up to 1650 degree celsius while retaining is shape without deformation refractory is mainly used in the furnace of water tube boilers around the water walls although it is also used in the tank type smoke tube boilers where furnace is not surrounded by water and in the inspection covers for the smoke tubes it protects the boiler casing from overheating and distortion thereby preventing the leakage of gases into the machinery space it reduces the furnace heat loss and ensures acceptable temperature for operating personnel it protects the exposed parts of drum and headers from the furnace heat and prevents their overheating it is used as at burner coil to radiate the heat back for maintaining stable primary flame it acts as heat reservoir and it is also used to form baffles for directing the gas flow desirable properties of refractory materials it must be able to withstand temperature up to 1650 degree celsius while retaining its shape without deformation it must have good insulating properties to prevent excessive heat loss it must have sufficient mechanical strength to resist the forces set up by the adjacent refractory it must be able to withstand vibrations caused by machinery and forces of wind and sea it must be able to expand and contract freely to prevent deformation and eventual cracking it must be able to withstand the cutting and abrasive action of flame and dust from the impurities in the fuel oil refractory may be made from acidic materials such as clay silica quartz and sandstone it may be neutral such as chromite graemite plumbago alumina or it can be alkaline such as lime magnesia and zirconia etc refractory may be available in one of the following forms fire bricks are made from natural clay containing alumina silica and quartz they are shaped into bricks and fired in a kiln
monolithic refractory is supplied in the unfired state installed in the boiler and fired in situation when the boiler is commissioned moldable refractory is used where direct exposure to radiant heat takes place it must be pounded into place during installation it is made from natural clay and added with calcified fire clay which has been crushed and graded plastic chrome ore is bonded with clay and used for studded walls it has little strength and hence studs provide the support and it is pounded into place it is able to resist high temperature castable refractory is placed over water walls and other parts of the boiler where it is protected from radiant heat it is installed in a manner similar to concreting in a building insulating materials may be in the form of blocks bricks sheets or powder and used as second line of refractory they are behind the furnace refractory which is exposed to the flame and may consist of calcified magnesia silica or diatomite which are porous and siliceous in nature installation of refractory some of the points should be considered while installing the refractory which include surface must be clean and free from dust safety precautions should be observed while installation is in progress person involved in the job should have adequate skill and experience refractory should be properly reinforced and anchored adequate time should be allowed for curing and following the correct procedure method of installation depends on the job specifications monolithic refractory can be installed by one of the following methods it is the straight forward method of mixing and pouring wet material into molds which hold it in the place until it is set and then the molds are removed as the castable refractory is in fluid state most type of castable refractories can be pumped to a location by special trucks or trailers equipped with pneumatically operated screw pump with pipes and hoses granite is dry monolithic refractory applied with air operated gun like equipment water or additives is introduced at the nozzle to moisten the dry refractory to stick on the surface and short crete is typically a low cement low moisture refractory which is fully tempered and mixed with water or special additives and then applied through a machine using a piston pump and air to spray wet material from the nozzle boiler can become inoperative in case of severe damage to the refractory it is thus necessary to carry out regular inspection of the furnace so that refractory defects pertaining to brickwork 
and protected surfaces of the drums are revealed at early stage and costly repairs can be avoided. Refractive defects can be classified into following four categories. Spalling is the breaking away of layers of the brick surface caused by fluctuating temperature under frame impingement or firing a boiler too soon after water washing or brickwork repair. It may also be caused by failure to close off air from the resistor after stopping the burner when cool air impinges on the hot refractory. Slagging is the softening of the brickwork to a liquid state due to presence of vanadium or sodium in the fuel from sea water which acts as flux and lowers the melting point of the brick to form a liquid pool in the furnace. Eyebrows may form above the coral and the attachment may become exposed. Material falling to the floor may critically reduce the burner clearance and reduce efficiency. Flame impingement may lead to carbon penetration in the refractory. Bricks which are secured by bolts may have a tendency to crack in case bolts get exposed and fail due to overheating. And lastly, refractory are weaker in tension than in compression or shear. Sudden compression after the expansion of brick at high temperature may result in cracking if cooled suddenly. Now we will study water walls. As per its name, water walls form the wall of the furnace in water tube boilers. Water walls contain the heat of the furnace and reduce the amount of refractory material required. Four basic designs have been developed to maintain the strength of tube plate or header while utilizing the radiant heat efficiently which are discussed in the following slides. The sketch shows the design of partially studied water wall and its sectional view. Water wall tubes have relatively wider pitch. Steel studs are welded on water wall tubes which help to reinforce the refractory. The gap between the tube is sealed by plastic chrome or refractory which is reinforced by steel stirs due to its low strength. Two inch thick high temperature refractory is provided behind the water wall tubes. Four inch thick low temperature insulation is covered by the steel plate to prevent any gas leakage from the furnace. The sketch shows the tangent wall design and its sectional view through middle.
furnace wall tubes have minimum pitch having just a small gap. The sketch shows the attachment of water wall on the header. Ends of alternate tubes are staggered to fix them on header with relatively wider pitch to ensure adequate strength for the header. Two inch thick high temperature insulation is provided behind water wall tubes. Four inch thing, uh, thick low temperature insulation is covered by a steel plate to prevent any gas leakage from the furnace and double casing is sometimes used in large capacity boilers. The sketch shows membrane wall design and its sectional view through the middle. Furnace wall consists of plain tubes separated by half inch gap. The gap is filled by attaching steel fins between adjacent tubes by electric resistance welding. There is no need for refractory behind the tube as radiant heat cannot penetrate through it. 4 inch thick low temperature insulation is used and backed by steel plate. There is no need for double casing with this design. The sketch shows another design of the membrane wall which is called as mono wall. It consists of fin tubes which are joined together by arc welding and provide a gas tight furnace. This completes the study of refractory and water walls. This book is written by me and covers all the topics as per Indian Maritime University syllabus. It is also recommended by Indian Maritime University as a reference book. It clarifies the concepts with simple illustrations. This book also provides answers to all the questions which have appeared in the examination conducted by Indian Maritime University. This book can help the students in preparing for the exam and also to work on the ship's boiler safely. Hope you have liked the lecture. You can write your feedback in the comment box. If you have liked the tutorial, you may share it with your friends. You may subscribe to the channel for getting notification about the new tutorials. I'll be back with a new lecture shortly. Thanks for watching till the end.